Hello and welcome back to the video series of finite element analysis. In today's video, I am going to talk about four node quadrilateral element. So let's get started. So in the previous videos, we have uh, seen the analysis of constant strain triangle element. So in this video, we are going to see the constant strain uh, quadrilateral element, which is for the four node. So let's start. So instead of uh, three elements here, you can see there are four nodes in 2D space. Node number one, node number two. So we are giving the numbers in the counterclockwise direction so here the first representation is in the term of cartesian system and here it is the representation of a system in natural coordinate system So intermediate point P, which is within the element and the, it is uh, shown by zeta and eta, where zeta and eta are the natural coordinates of this point P. So now let's derive the equation and Jacobian for the same. So first here you can see the vector Q is representing the total coordinates of the all the elements which starts from Q1, Q2 and up to Q8. So this vector denotes the elemental displacement vector. The displacement of the interior point P is located at the xy is represented as u which is equal to u the function of xy and v which is also function of xy. Now we are going to see the shape function. So the shape function on this element is defined as the zeta and eta coordinates in a square shape. So the Lagrange shape function where the i equal to 1, 2 and 3, 4 are defined as n1 which is at which is 1 at node number 1 and n1 is equal to 0 at node number 2 3 and 4 now the requ requirement that the n is equal to 0 at node number 2 3 and 4 is equivalent to the requiring that n is equal to 0 along the edges, uh, eta is equal to plus 1 and zeta is, is equal to plus 1. So n1 we need to write in the terms of zeta and eta. So n1 is equal to p minus 1 minus zeta and 1 minus theta where the c is the constant now the constant is determined from the condition n1 is equal to 1 at node number 1 
So at node number one, eta and zeta, both the values are minus one. Here you can see in this node number one. So putting all these value in this equation, n one, the constant value of c would be equal to one by four. So putting all these values c, zeta, and eta, we have an equation n one is equal to one by four, one minus eta, one minus eta. So now uh, let's uh, calculate the other uh, values of shape function for uh, all four nodes. So n one is one by four, one minus eta, and one minus zeta. Zeta. So one by four, one minus zeta, and one minus eta. So same way we can calculate the n two function, shape function. That is one by four, one plus zeta, one minus zeta. For n three, it would be one by four, one plus zeta, and one plus eta. And for n four, it would be one by four, one minus zeta and one plus zeta so this uh, compact representation can be uh, represented as n of i 1 by 4 1 plus eta eta i and 1 plus zeta zeta i. Now we want to express the displacement field within the element in terms of nodal values. So if the u which is representing the displacement components of a point located at zeta and eta and the q <coughs> which is having the dimension 8 cross 1 in the element displacement vector Then uh, u and v can be represented by u equal to n1 q1 plus n2 q3 plus n3 q5 plus n4 q7, which is similar to the uh, three node triangle which we have uh, seen in the previous videos. So, one element is added and two components are added so which can be represented in the matrix form as u equal to n into q where the n is equal to in matrix form we have two rows uh, which starts from n1 0 n2 0 n3 0 n4 0 and here it starts from 0 n1 0 n2 0 n3 and 0 n4 so this is the isometric uh, formulation in matrix form now we need to uh, express these coordinates of the point within the element in terms of nodal coordinates. So we can write in terms of nodal coordinates. So 
which is x and y which are the uh, nodal coordinates or also it is known as cartesian coordinates so it can be written as n1 x1 n2 x2 n3 x3 and n4 x4 same for y n1 y1 n2 y2 n3 y3 and n4 y4 now uh, as we have uh, done the procedure earlier we will follow we will have we will need to express the derivatives of the function in x and y coordinates in terms of eta and eta so here the function is of x and y which can be represented as function x which is function of eta and eta y again eta and eta now rules of uh, differentiation applying the rules of differentiation uh, if we differentiate this first in terms of eta with respect to eta so we get del f by del x del x by del eta del f by del y del y by del eta same with respect to eta now so del f by del x del x by del eta plus del f by del y and del y by del eta or Uh, this can be represented in terms of jacobian so del f by del eta del f by del eta is equal to jacobian into del f by del x and del f by del y so here the jacobian j is equal to del x by del eta del y by del eta del x by del eta and del y by del eta so this is my jacobian equation for the uh, quadrilateral element so this jacobian uh, can be inverted like this so del f by del x del f by del y so we are doing the inverse of this thing we are taking the reference of this thing because we want to find that thing so j inverse del f by del eta and del f by del eta so instead of inverse we can write we can write one upon the determinant of this matrix into adjoint of this matrix is written as this into the function so this is our 
relation between the Cartesian coordinates x, y and the natural coordinates which are zeta and eta. So in this way, we can find the relation between these two. So hope you find it useful. Thank you.